back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we are taking a look at the 7th Citadel. This has been a long time coming. This was easily one of uh, the you know longer waits I was uh, waiting for, but they were consistently updating us. Pandemic was in there, so I've never felt like this was not going to deliver. What we see here is the, the core box. So if you ordered the core box, this is what you're gonna get. This is the accessories pack add-on. So I know that they're gonna be uh, selling some of these, all their like excess uh, stock on their website. So if you order the accessories bundle, this is what you're going to get. Essentially, it's this little uh, binder. We'll take a look at all this in a bit, but the little uh, quest items binder, card binder, all of the wooden, not cardboard, but wooden card holders, and then the play mat underneath. So this was, you know, one bundle. And then here is the uh, expansion bundle. So these are all the expansions that you will eventually be able to purchase. I don't know if these are all gonna be bundled together or whether you can bundle them all apart. I think it's kind of interesting. They just have this empty space there, but I guess that helped it, uh, things not get crushed. But anyways, uh, let's start taking a look at this stuff. All right, so first things first, so we have a nice backdrop for everything. We're gonna take a look at the play mat so it can sit underneath us in the background. The play mat does come in a box. I know a lot of people are grumpy about this. Yes, there are gonna be creases, but just lay it out, hang it up, um, get you a skirt hanger, so the ones with the little clips on them, and just hang it up in your closet. It will be fine eventually. Nice little box though. Obviously there are reasons why they you know, flat packed it instead of rolling it up. But uh, here we go. This is gonna be noisy for a second. So maybe we'll mute this part. All right, so there we go. There it is laid out. You can obviously see, you know, there are some bumps in it. Uh, we're about to put a big heavy box on it. It's darker than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be more, you know, khaki, uh, lighter gray color, tan color, but that's fine. It works. Um, yeah, this just creates a nice surface. These don't look big enough, but I guess they are. Um, I remember the cards being bigger. But yeah, this is just a nice, Nice play service to help keep everything organized. So here is the core box. Um, those of you not familiar with Seventh Citadel, it is a exploration uh, game. This one is a lot more narrative driven than the first one, but certainly exploration, and I like to call it a world building game. Because as you lay out the cards, you start opening up this world. Uh, it's almost like you know, fog of war type of stuff that you can't quite see much further beyond you. And then you start exploring and all these things open up. One of the biggest things with Seven Citadel that is different is that the world is gonna change a little bit and they have a way to keep track of that and you know, show you how things have changed on the map. In Seventh Continent, you always kind of started in the same location, which got a little old after a little while. You always knew to like go up to that thing on the rocks and check it out, and you always knew how to handle the submarine. Getting off that first initial little island that you always seemed to wake up on became second nature for anybody. And then things branched out along uh, from there. But with the Seventh Citadel, and the world ever changing, there's going to be different areas that you will start from. Um, the world's going to change and, and you're going to keep track of it. This is not a legacy game, however. We'll show you how all that works here in just a second. For the most part, this is going to be a big old box of cards, but that is fine. All right, we have a little thank you note. Uh, dear Backer, this adventure could have never been performed without your support. It's now entering its final stage. 250,000 words. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you really want to pause that and read it, you can, but uh, I'll probably read it later. Here is a bookmark. Just to simply, there is a you know, kind of a dialogue book in here somewhere. So if you want to keep up with where you are, there is the bookmark. We have a rule book. Uh, very neat. Um, you know, looks looks a lot like the Seventh Continent rule book. This one's nice and good size, though. The other one was more squared off, but that's fine. Um, that looks pretty standard there. This is the world map. So, this is what I was talking about. How the 
the world can change in legacy format, but it's not in true legacy format where we're not changing, destroying, permanently changing any aspects of the game. But you can kind of see here that this is kind of a plasticky mat. It almost has that feeling of like your 1980s uh, dinner mat that, that you, your parents would put underneath you. But you can actually, you're going to be able to put sleeves, I mean cards, into these sleeves. That's what they are. And change this mat. So I don't know whether they're going to recommend leaving this sit out, but all the creases are in the right spot. But there you go. You can see how, you know, I can get my finger back behind this. And so we may go explore this newlywed island in the pebble thinking that's what it looks like and it may have been completely changed and so after we explore it there may be you know an outpost there and we can start from there on our next mission but uh, here you can see it's called the kale protectorate world map so this is really nice it's nice and thick um you know really thick edges here i don't think that things are going to tear off again i'm curious as to whether or not i'm going to feel like i need to store this out which that might not be the worst thing in the world. That'd be cool to look at to figure out how to hang it on the wall. We're gonna set that off to the side, just fold it once. Okay, we have some of our blah. Okay, so these are gonna be the sheets that you're gonna start your campaign with and you're gonna keep up with. There's a lot of stuff going on here. You have various tracks that you're gonna be able to go up and down on. So pencil, obviously, um, this is naming your community, not just your party. So this is, again, a little bit of world building. You know, games like Kingdom Death Monster have become very famous because of their community building aspect in between the big boss fights. Um, but list the players, threat being played. Um, what we have here is a, you know, almost like a tech tree. This has very much uh, Final Fantasy X vibes in my opinion for any of the video gamers out there but essentially you start here in the middle and you will work your way out as you unlock experience points each of these symbols you know does something underneath and then we have a version of the map here this is a little bit more zoomed in but we can actually take notes on this uh, similar to how we would do in say distant skies make little notes notations um, and keep up with here we have a list of side quests that we can keep up with, so as we unlock those, we'll write them down. A nice kind of quick rules reference on the back. Um, and then here you have all your buildings that can be built in your community. Remember, this is a, a world builder. Um, and so obviously you'll check off ones that you've unlocked and whether you've got multiples of them and they basically give you various bonuses. So this has a little bit of a frost haven feel to it in my opinion but i believe the retail version of the game is just going to come with one of these i could be wrong but um the kickstarter version here came with several and i believe there's even more in the accessories pack so i think i've got plenty for the life of this game all right here is the dialogue book um it's pretty thick here you can see good thickness. I'm not going to stop on any pages or anything like that, but you can see it is full of dialogue. And there is a bookmark, so I guess there might be times where you want to quickly go back and uh, reread said passage. So I'm pretty sure that's why they gave us a bookmark. There we go. Alright, here are our threats, aka scenarios. So in the, in the core box here we have three. We have a new beginning, it's kind of an introductory uh, scenario. You can see it's it's not very thick at all, but there's a lot going on here. It's going to give you, you know, one cycle equals one year, and it gives you some introductory choose your character. So whoever you choose, you're going to read this, and then um, composing your action deck, epilogue, uh, and then I'm not going to spoil the conclusion. Then we've got drums of resolution and Dodecian's Awakening, I think. That's a very hard font to read. Um, but these are super thick. I mean, this this is, you know, like a little mini novel right there. So this, th this is what the scenarios are, but these are, you know, 
campaign length scenarios. These are not to be you know played in one city. This one might maybe will. And one of our expansions contains a fourth one. So lots to do. Now we see all the cards. Now the one item from this campaign I did not get was the uh, extra large storage box with all the sleeves. I do sleeve the action cards and I will be doing that. I've got my sleeves ready to go but you can see here there is plenty of room. This is just foam filling right here. There's three storage trays for all the cards. There's gonna be plenty of room to get these out and organized and sleeve you know 200 of them I think it is. Uh, four or maybe 300 something like that. between 200 and 300 or less than 200 maybe even so let's take these out don't ever throw these away these are super handy um, in other cases even if you don't use them in this game okay so we have some standees this is going to be uh, in, in retail edition again tiny but they are to scale then we have On the Edge of Peril. So this expansion contains two dividers and 30 cards to spice up your adventure. It cannot be played without the Seventh Citadel base game. Okay, I forgot about this, but it was probably listed below. What's interesting is that the divider has been eaten. Edge of Peril, ooh, they, there's little pop-outs. Very fancy, and then those cards so not quite sure what that is but there's not going to be a ton of card opening here because this is very much you know spoiler zone here if I can get this back in there um, don't want to spoil anything there's a lot of fun secrets um, but there you go you get a little mini expansion inside the box these are a whole bunch of other dividers, characters, save, character skills, advanced skills, reflex skills, banish cards, where are we going here, number, and there we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, wow, look at all these, all these ones here are like the Fog of War cards that you explore, and then there's going to be one underneath, and here are the rest, so this is, you know, zero through 50, this is 50 through 100, and so on and so forth, so you can see there is almost 600 cards more than likely when you get to the end they're going to start jumping numbers but that leaves room for them to fit in expansions down the road so we're going to stick those there we'll stick these back here and just so they don't slide around on us we'll put one of these things back in there we go all right we have a taped box So there's not a whole lot um, of extra things needed in this game. I'm looking and I don't see, there's one thing I haven't seen yet. Oh, there they are. Okay. So you get a magnifying glass. Uh, I know this was a stretch goal. I don't know if this is going to come with all copies of the game, but there are a lot of times where you're supposed to, you know, look closer at the cards and this is just there to help. You also have uh, life trackers and skill trackers. Um, these are oof, really tough. <laughs> really tough to keep up with. So yeah, I don't know if these are meant to be like two different dials. It's going, you know, they're only zero to nine on each side. Um, but yeah, there's basically one of these for each of the, the various characters you can be. Then we have our miniatures here. Itty bitty teeny tiny little miniatures, but again, they are designed to be to scale. Um, I have no intentions of painting something that small. Um, and it looks like there is a, a male and a female in each color. Which is, yeah, I think, I think that's the male and that's the female. Let's look here. That's definitely a female. And that's a male. So yeah, I think that's what they're giving you is just, do you want to play as a male or a female? And then your player color. 
we have some stands for the standees and then some dice, which there were zero dice. Uh, well, I, I take that back. There were dice in the first one, but they were used as counters on your items. I don't know if that's what these are for because the stars make it seem like these might be uh, things you can add in for additional successes. Uh, get the opportunity to make a roll. I don't see any you know, little mini dice, but that's it. That's essentially all there is um, for things that are not cards is right here. You saw it all, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, this game is all about the cards. Now, <clears throat> this I think we can show you. So the blue cards, generally are gonna be the ones that are safe. And there's a couple of them here, but um, you know, a lot of times things look like this, where you're getting up close and you make a decision, and then it locks you out of it. Um, let me see if there's another one that might be safe for me to show you. This one's probably safe. Uh, here you can see this is more where the miniatures come into scale. So there's a little house there, there's a little fire here. So obviously you, if you investigate this fire, you have to, you know, have, take this action, spend one plus action card, get zero successes. So as long as you discard a card, you're successful, and then you read this, or you bring out this card, and it's gonna give you something. If you wanna explore this way, it's 90, this way is 128, and this house probably, uh, you take some type of map action, again, it's free. So that's how this game works. But the, card, the cards on either side of it are going to connect, and so when they're all out together, they create this big, huge scene. And it's you know quite amazing to look at. So let's just take a look at how these cards work here. Again, we're not going to open all of them because it's a ton of cards, uh, and a lot of this game is discovering the new ones. That's the the joy of the game. So I don't want to take that from you, and I also don't want to take it from myself. So. These are some of the, your action cards here. Um, these numbers, or I mean, I'm sorry, numbers, letters, up in the up corner uh, on the hands are new. I'm not sh quite sure what those are for, but um, let's just say, for example, you have to uh, take a certain test and you have to draw at least, it says two cards, and you have to get three successes. Well, maybe you wanna hedge your bets and two plus means you can actually draw more, so you would draw three. Well, here you've drawn three cards and you can see that there are stars and half stars on here. Um, and the half stars are on specific sides. So I, in this instance, I can rearrange them like this, have gotten four successes. So I would have passed that test. At the end of the test then, you can take one of these cards into your hand uh, and hold on to it. And you do have a hand size, um, but uh, maybe you would uh, save this one and then later on you take what appears to be the rest action You choose up three cards in your discard pile and shuffle them back into your action deck Block this. I'm not 100% sure what block means, but um, Here's another one anticipation during the consequences step. So these are cards in your hand um, That you can then play to help mitigate skill checks and you know uh, events that happen or maybe it's a healing card or a uh, equipment card that you can then build once you find the right resources and have access to you know a knife or something like that so really fun way of doing this but this action deck is going to be a certain size at the beginning of each scenario and it's essentially kind of like your life when you go through it the first time um, you know usually at least in seventh continent once you went through it the first time at any point there at that second round of the the game if you drew the wrong card the game was over so whether you had made it to the end or not um, that was that so and you can see there's a whole slew of these I'm trying to find ones that that are like a something we can craft but I'm not seeing any right now so maybe they do items here a little differently this one this one right here you may not apply the following effect if the fight action has the react x trait otherwise during the gear up step return the card that shows that symbol on an action and then take a 13 card to try your luck um, so flight okay so that's a flight card anyways 
it's a lot more nuanced than that. Um, but there you have it. So that I know is, is again, not showing you much, but that is the core box. So let's take a look at the rest of the accessories pack. So first things first is a whole nother seven more leaflets. And I think I got four or five in the box. So more than 10. I can play this game 10 times and then I can either order more of these or I can save the last one and photocopy it. Or I can just print off uh, ones from Sirius Pulp's website. But if I get 10 games of the 7th Citadel in, I'm going to be pretty happy uh, with what I have gained from uh, this game. I will have gotten my money's worth. So there we go. All right. Here we have our little uh, journal. So there's going to be times where we gain what's called quest items. So these are going to be items that you don't want to, you know, you can't just use up. And you don't want to discard for any reason. You want to hold on to them because they help tell the story and, and give you clues to finishing off the quest. And so you can place them. Normally you would just you know, have them in a stack somewhere or put in Seventh Continent. You just put them under a card unless you had one of these special binders here. So um, it is held on like that. The nice maze uh, picture there. So you flip that open and it's really just, you know, it's like a Pokemon binder or something like that that holds these square cards. So that's, you know, all it is, but it's a nice, you know, fabric bound leather on the outside, fabric on the inside, plenty of room for your cards here. So just a way to a fancier way to help you stay organized during the game. Purely cosmetic add on. I guess you could maybe say quality of life add on. All right, and then last but not least, we have our card towers. Uh, one of the really nice things that they have sent us, which is completely not necessary, is a file because these are, you know, laser cut wood. This is balsa wood. And if you've ever popped out balsa wood, a lot of times it ends up with little, you know, splinters where it's holding on to. It does this in cardboard too, but the cardboard isn't going to give you a splinter. So they give you this file so that you can file down your stuff as you're putting them together. More than likely, these will probably need to be glued together and you're always just, you just wanna, wanna put them together and, and find a shelf for them. I doubt they're gonna fit in the box. Uh, I doubt you're gonna wanna take them apart <laughs> and build them every time you play a game, but I guess maybe you could. You could keep them in this box like, or this bag like this, who knows. For now, we're just gonna do that with them. But that was the accessories pack. Um, I think the biggest thing in the accessories pack that um, people are going to be looking for is the playmat and or these because there's a lot of cards in the game. These uh, come in come in very handy to keep you organized. And then last but not least, we have all of our expansions. So this is going to contain a couple little smaller modules as well as one whole new scenario aka threat so we've got the unveilers we've got the lembic of valangard we have knowledge is power this one seems very similar to the other small one we just unboxed and then the big one here is our scenario so Let's take a look at these from smallest to largest. It says this expansion for the Seventh Citadel contains 40 cards, including 20 double cards to spice up your adventure. Okay, cannot be played on its own. Makes sense. All right. These are just cards. The other box is a little bigger because it came with uh, two dividers. But uh, yeah, so this is interesting. I don't know if you guys can see that while well, I'm trying to figure out how this might open, but when they mean double cards, they mean like, you know, a card, double thickness card. Looks like you can fit another card into it, almost like a sleeve. So here we have, you know, some standard cards. 
here we're, we're filling in with some you know 50s 325 see how much we're jumping around but then this one here um, is uh, okay you, you can't sleeve it but it is it is like a little book so it's a card it's got a number but uh, it's got all this in it so that is interesting a whole bunch of those in the middle I don't know why some of them are upside down and then we finish our numbers so very exciting I'm just gonna go ahead and take these and stick them right in the box there we go obviously you're not gonna be sleeving those double cards that would be silly all right this one here has what appears to be some robots in it and a seeker box the legendary alembic of valangar disappeared during the conflict between the kel and the worm master rumor has it that a necrodruidic spell was cast and broke into several pieces giving each piece two root legs interesting so we've got some little miniatures here I don't know if the retail version of this is gonna come with miniatures and or standees but there's your little robots and those are bigger than your people maybe they're meant to be bigger than your people but those are a good size we can paint those suckers for sure and then we do have some standees so this is what I would assume a retail version um, would get you and then a secret box in French. Do not open. Ne pas ouvrir. Ouvrir? Au, au, au revoir? Au revoir? So there's something in there. Something that's making some noise. I don't know. And then, yeah, it's a foam piece. Again, save this if you can. Uh, they come in handy, you never know. Uh, do not open the A box until the game tells you to do so. It gives you some instructions here and some cards. Ooh, no, I don't want to show you that. That was that was peaking. Okay, so we're going to try and set this stuff off to the side. Very exciting. And we have some bugs. I'm guessing these are kind of be like the worms that would pop up out of the ground. Uh, essentially, you would shuffle their cards into the mix and a lot of times you come across cards where there's more than one so you just kind of shuffle them up in place and draw one and that changes the variety of the game and sometimes it would be a worm card and so you'd put this little worm miniature on it and um, you know that cause you trouble so all right again we have some standees um, standee bases have some instructions here. This expansion contains six unveilers. Well, that's interesting. There's a big bug on the front, but no, none of these miniatures are bugs. Um, you basically just shuffle them in, and there you go. So there, those are again. These look to be bigger size. Those could probably be painted as well, and some cards. So I'm pretty sure that these last two things are just like modules that you can choose to add in. Um, I don't know whether they increase the difficulty of the game or not, but at this point it's like, why wouldn't you just go ahead and add them in to get all of the experience? So, but anything that pops up out of the ground is probably making the game a little more difficult. All right, last but not least, we have the final throne. So this is going to be a whole new uh, threat. So it contains the threat booklet, 126 cards, a citadel leaflet. So a whole new leaflet, and it cannot be played without the base kit. <coughs> Whoa! <coughs> that was thick, thin cards. Uh, so there, I'll, I'll give you a peek at that one. Since you probably be seeing that, looks like that's an actual village or citadel or something like that. There's some people in there. Didn't see a whole lot of people in Seventh Continent. All right, uh, we have two sets of cards here. So lots of cards in this one. We have our booklet. It's just as thick as the other ones. So there we go. So we got four total scenarios, three, uh, one beginner and, and then look at this. This one even comes with a leaflet. So I now have 12 to 13. What's nice about this is that they're assuming if you get this after the fact, maybe you have filled out the, you know, one, two, or three. Maybe they give you four. Maybe they're always going to give you three in 
or three or four in the core box, you can play through each one of the threats that comes in the box. And this one, it's like, all right, we gave you a threat, we're gonna give you a brand new sheet. So this, I'm sure, is everything we've already seen. But, so there we go. Again, I'm not gonna get too much into spoilers or anything like that, but we will be um, playing one of these. I hear there's a fair amount of uh, the beginner, the beginning, out there so we may wait and check out one of these other ones I don't know if there is like a difficulty level like you know beyond the tutorial one do they recommend playing a different one first but we will be playing some seventh citadel on the channel just so you guys can see what it's all about it's definitely it's definitely not like a, a single sit down and play one video type of thing so I don't know whether we'll just show a snippet of one threat slash scenario or whether we'll do a whole one whole series um, back to back to back to back I, I did put up a pretty good amount of a, of a scenario for seventh continent until I literally got stuck <laughs> and was like not making any progress but such is the game anyways hopefully this was uh, enlightening helpful um, or just interesting for anybody out there who has been waiting for the seventh citadel to come out it's here now it's out now um, additional stock is going to be made available on Series Pulp's website very soon. So, other than that, once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.